All right, so over the last few months, um, the nickel plate road has really piqued my interest, and I attribute that to a couple factors. Um, number one have been just the locomotives themselves. In the last six months or so, I really, while well, I got a few Berkshires and did a lot of work on some of my Berkshires, and that really piqued my interest, you know, working on them, doing research on them, and just looking at them. They're just, they're just a very aesthetically pleasing locomotive. So that alone piqued my interest. And I coupled that with the fact that I did a bunch of trips up into the nickel plate territory, you know, up around uh, Lake Erie in western New York, uh, the little sliver of Pennsylvania there, and then northeast Ohio, right up along Lake Erie. Um, really just piqued my interest. And so I decided uh, more recently to just to try and shift my entire modeling focus more towards a nickel plate. So I've been fortunate over the last few months to build my nickel plate roster substantially. Um, so we're looking at here, the engine's up in the front. These are the four engines that I have now that I, I'm i considering mostly complete. Um, there are some things that neither, not one of these engines here is 100% complete. They all have little things that need to be done, but these are what I consider to be presentable. I have two there in the back at Rail King work and that diesel engine, which I have needed a lot more work or not quite presentable yet. But as I keep working on them, I'll showcase them soon. But I just want to show off these four now. So this engine here is a nickel plate 770 to an S3 Berkshire. Um, this is actually the engine that I attribute that got me the most into the nickel plate. I picked this up off my friend Nick back about six months ago in, in March. Um, it was a 759 because the number boards there are still 759. I haven't gotten around to renumbering them yet. Um, but I did a lot of work on that, did a lot of made into excursion engine, I did a lot of research on it, looked at a lot of pictures of 759 and Berkshires, and that really piqued my interest. I really enjoyed working on that engine, um, and I liked it a lot, but as I slowly built out the rest of my nickel plate roster, um, it, this engine, the engine as it looked didn't really fit, it was all clean, had all the weight walls, and it looked great, but I really wanted to have a bunch of in-service engines, so just recently I decided to renumber it, it's now 770, and then I weathered it. Um, so the only thing it needs done on this one is the tender needs weathered, but that's not down here. On the engine itself, need to do the number boards. Other than that, the engine is pretty much done. I still need to clear coat it. You can see the cab windows there are still taped off. Um, I took all the stuff on the front the other night because I only wanted to see how it looked all completed with all the tape taken off. But uh, it will eventually get down and complete this. Um, again, it's almost there, but really happy with this. And so I'm really happy now I can have two Berkshires. The other one here is 742, and this engine started off actually as a Richmond, Fredericksburg, and Potomac Berkshire, Lionel, RF, and P. Burke. Um, I bought that a couple years ago at my local train store. I've always wanted, always wanted a legacy uh, scale Berkshire for the longest time since I was a little kid. And when the opportunity arose to buy one, even though it wasn't nickel plate, I jumped on it anyway. I was just really wanted a nickel plate Burke. Um, so I got, it was originally RF and P and then once I started working on this one, which was a, as, you know, an as delivered nickel plate burger, I had the nickel plate sound file, the nickel plate details. I really wanted to go back and I wanted to have two of them. And so I took the RF and P one and I just nickel plateified that one as well. Um, so I added a lot of details to it. I added in Mars light number boards. I redid the pilot. Um, this is now like a, uh, like one of the cast pilots nickel plate had in the Burke 742 had that style cast pilot. I also redecaled the entire thing. So you can see it has the new number, um, the details up on the sand dome, or the steam dome, excuse me, but that's so obscured, but it is there. I did decal that as well. Um, but really happy with this engine. It looks nothing like it did before. If I if I didn't just say, you know, it's it's, it's background, you would have never guessed uh, that it was R of a P. It looks completely different. But between these two, I'm extremely happy with these two engines. Um, I'm really happy to have not only one, I'm really fortunate and lucky i think to not only have one but two scale berkshires um so these are definitely probably my favorite engines in my collection that i have right now um ideally i would like to have like five uh scale nickel plate berks um but like i said i'm more than happy with the two i have now i love these engines I think this they're just aesthetically pleasing they're just like perfectly sized um i love the, i love the mars light on really any nickel plate steam engine the mars light just looks so cool um and I love them weathered too. Like not only having two, but having two completely customized, custom numbered, custom weathered engines looks super cool. And I'm really happy and really fortunate that I can do that. So, um, so again, this one still needs the number boards and the tender needs weathered. This one's the most complete out of any, every engine I'm gonna show here. The only thing it needs is a whistle pull cord. You see 770 has the pull cord, 742 still needs that, but that'll come eventually. Um, but yeah, that's, these two look great together. I can't wait, can't wait to double head them. 
All right, over here is 631. This is a Lionel Legacy Light Mikado. It was originally the 587. I also, just like the 770, I picked this up off of Nick, my friend Nick. He has a YouTube channel, Kiski Division Railroad. He models the Pensy. Uh, definitely give check him out. Um, but he's modeling the Pensy, and before he had a couple other outliers. He still has a few, but he was looking to get rid of most of his non Pensy stuff, and this was one of them. So. Thank you to Nick for giving me the opportunity to have this engine because these are relatively hard to come across. So I can't thank Nick enough for uh, deciding to sell me this engine, knowing full well I would completely change it and bring it up to my standards. But this is, again, this was originally a nickel plate 587. Um, I've said I'm, I'm kind of focusing my modeling interest in the nickel plate right at the end of steam, so the late 50s, like 1957, 58. And, I just, and so this one, I weathered, renumbered it, weathered it to reflect one of the Mikados as it appeared in the late 50s. So it's now nickel plate 631. Um, so I had to do a fair amount of work on it, uh, probably the most out of any of the engines here to get it where it's at. So um, again, renumbered it. I added a Mars light on the, spoke the headlight, because I use every late air nickel plate engine has to have a Mars light. That's like my favorite part of nickel plate steam are the Mars lights. Also redid the pilot for the cast pilot. I moved the air pumps from the originally on the other side, hanging off the um, off the running boards. So I moved them to the front. Actually, these are spare parts uh, air pumps that I had. I had to cut them in half, so there's actually no bottom to them because they don't quite fit. They were too tall to fit in the area that was given. So I cut them in half, and I scratch built the pump shields out of styrene and brass. I think they came out really look really good, and they hide the fact that the pumps are cut in half. I don't think I don't even think you really notice. Um, I added the ex extra flags on it. I also had the stack extension, and that was a neat thing. It's actually a 3D printed part that I um, that fit perfectly into the stack. It was a spare part that I had, and then I uh, built the little straps out of uh, cardstock. That's probably my favorite little feature on this engine is the um, the stack extension. I also had the cylinder bracing. I painted the pilot wheel white, um, which is something accurate. A lot of nickel plate mics they did that for check for cracks. They actually painted the pilot wheel white when they, these came in for servicing. And I also had a whistle pull cord on the whistle. It's kind of hard to tell, but it is there. You can kind of make it out. Um, and I also had a whistle, like a shield, uh, or like a, yeah, I guess you call it a shield for the whistle. And I, you know, weathered it like I do with the rest of the engines here. Again, really happy with it. It's definitely a one of a kind engine. Has a great, uh, a great sound in it. Love the whistle in this engine. The only thing this one needs is just the number boards. And then of course the tender needs none, but for the most part, this one's pretty much done. I'm very happy with this one. And last but certainly not least is this little guy. This is actually a wine cheese starter set 080. A funny story with this, I was actually in the market for one of these. I, I have one of these already, um, an old conventional one from about, I don't know, 2010 or so, maybe a little bit older, but it had the less simplified valve gear. Lionel did two runs, two versions of these starter set 080s, one with this little more detailed valve gear and one with a very simplified valve gear. So I was actually in the market for, um, uh, one of these little, a new, another Oedo with a more detailed valve gear. And of all places, I was at the beach in Wildwood, New Jersey. There's a train store there called Holly Beach Train Depot, and he had one of these, uh, one of these Lion Chief Oedos for sale, actually undecorated, so it had no prior railroad on it. It was just an undecorated model for under $200. So I picked it up with the intent, it was like perfect timing, so I picked it up and I built this into a nickel plate X Wheeling and Lake Erie C1A Oedo. Um, Engine. I think it came out great. I did, did a little bit of detail work on it. Um, the headlights replaced. It's a replacement. That's a new headlight I put on it. Um, I think it's a, it's a precision scale part, much more detailed headlight. That's a 3D printed, um, uh, what's the word, deck that it sits on. The word's escaping me, but yeah, that, that's a custom built um, or a scratch built deck that it sits on. Uh, the class lights were my spare parts, man. I forget where they came from. I think they're from an MTH engine. I don't know where they came from, but I had them sitting there. And so scratch built the um, things that they sit on as well. And I just went ahead and put them on. And again, more 3D printing on the number plate on the front that I decaled up. I moved the headlight, I moved the coupler. It, it really stuck out far. So I actually cut it and shortened it. So even though it's still the O-gauge, big O-gauge lobster claw coupler, it sits at a much more prototypical length. It doesn't stick out as much as it did initially from the front. Uh, I also darkened up all the valve gear, the tire edges, um, even the handrails originally, that like uh, silver, which I think looks terrible. So I fixed up all of that and then decaled it for 271. I think it's, and it looks really good for a Lion Chief engine and with the weathering and everything and extra detailing, really happy with this.